Comrades, welcome back to The Discerning Gamer. We're here with our fourth part of the Steel Division tutorial series I'm creating, and this one focuses, of course, on probably everyone's favourite bit of the game, armour. More specifically, first up, we'll be looking at armour penetration in the game, the mechanics behind that, and how that is going to impact the way you play the game. So to start off with, let's look at this handsome little Ram 2 that is going to be demonstrating the mechanics around armour penetration for us. If we look at its unit card, we can start to see some of the key characteristics that will help us understand interactions between tanks and what we should be looking for when choosing tanks for our decks. So first and most excitingly, we've got the gun that has an accuracy rating, a rate of fire, an armour penetration rating, and the little 92 next to that is how many rounds it has on board, and of course the range is next to that. Below that we can see the armour layout for the tank. So on the right we have the frontal armour, below that the side armour, and to the left the rear armour. And you can see those are all different values to correspond with the armour thickness uh, disposition throughout the tank. So the in prime interaction that we're looking at is between the AP value and the armour value of the place that we're targeting on the tank that we're shooting at. And I'll be addressing the mechanics behind this with a live demonstration shortly, but I thought I'd just take this opportunity to address the topic of accuracy. So if we look at the main gun on the Ram 2, it has an accuracy of 5. Now this is kind of not really properly explained what this actually translates to or how we can expect this to influence the game, but I do know that there are several factors that do positively and negatively influence accuracy. So first of all, having a star of veterancy increases the accuracy statistic of the weapon in question by one. So if you've got one star of veterancy and your base weapon value is five accuracy, then your weapon will be six accuracy and seven accuracy and eight accuracy um, correspondingly if you add more stars on. You're also more accurate if the target is closer to you, if you have taken successive shots at the target, so you can take that as the crew learning to bracket the target or adjust for range, windage, what have you. You're also much more accurate if you're not moving. The other thing that affects your aim, and this is negatively, is the stress on the crew operating the weapon or vehicle. So the more under fire they are, the more full their suppression bar is, the worse their accuracy is. And if you look on the bottom right at the portrait that we have of the, the vehicle that we've got selected, at the moment you'll see the little bar underneath that very handsome portrait of De Rocher is empty and he's calm. As that starts to fill up, it'll obviously show that he's becoming more suppressed or more panicked under fire, and those values will change to something different, like, for example, uh, engaged, nervous, panicked, that kind of thing. Basically, the more stressed out they are by fire, the less accurate they will be. And this is a really good way in the game of offsetting an enemy's advantage if they've got superior weaponry to you. If you're able to bring a greater weight of fire to bear on them, you can actually stress out the crew without necessarily even having to kill them. You've removed the efficacy of their weapon from the engagement. So let's move on to looking at what happens when a gun of a certain AP fires at armor of a certain AP. Um, that poor 222 Speywagon has just rolled down the road, got hit by our Ram 2 and instantly blown to pieces. Now, if you know your history, this would not surprise you whatsoever, as the 222 is a very lightly armoured car and the Ram is a pretty well protected tank hunter. But let's take a moment to explain this interaction in terms of the mechanics of the game. So what we need to pay attention to here is the AP of our Ram 2's 57mm gun, which is 11, and the frontal armour of the Speywagon which you'll remember is a measly two. So because vehicles in Steel Division don't have a health pool, as you'd see in many other games, they rely on the state of the vehicle as actually working. So that means that the engine's working, the gun's working, the crew's alive, that sort of thing. And so it generally comes down to whether or not the shot penetrated the vehicle. 
So once it has penetrated, then it has a certain chance to do a number of things. But we have to look at what causes a shot to penetrate. So we do that calculation as to whether we'll achieve a penetration or not based on the difference between the AP of the gun that's been fired and the armor of the part that's been hit. So in the case of our 222, we have an 11 AP gun hitting a two armored frontal section. So <clears throat> at maximum range, that would mean that we're hitting it with 9 AP. And if we look at this handy dandy graph that I put on the right, that would give us a 97.22% chance to penetrate. And from that point onwards, there is a very high percentage chance that something fatal is going to happen, like a uh, ammo hit or the fuel being hit causing an explosion or the crew being knocked out. I'm going to link down below a Reddit post that shows a table of all the things that can happen based on either frontal, side or rear penetration. However, the extent to which you over penetrate the armour and where you're shooting, how far away you're shooting, doesn't seem to affect this, so I don't think it's really worth uh, trawling over in this video. So another thing that does affect the penetration against armour that we haven't discussed yet far, and which is nicely demonstrated against our next candidate, which is a um, Bifella's Panzer II, if I'm not mistaken, is the range at which you're firing. So you'll see there we opened up at pretty much maximum range and achieved a bounce and we then achieved a miss, and all the while the Panzer II is getting closer until finally we've achieved a penetration there that's caused spalling and a driver wound. Now, that's not just chance, because the closer a weapon is to the target that it's firing at when it fires solid shot AP, that's not high explosive anti-tank, when it fires just solid shot, the more um, AP value it has. So for every 100 meters under its max range, you can add another one to its AP value. And this is important to remember because if you're fighting against something that has particularly high armor, like for example, this Boiter Firefly that's coming down the road towards us, you can make up for a perhaps underpowered gun by getting closer to your opponent. So this is a very important to consider when you're positioning your units or you're using something that, for example, fires rapidly but has low power, like, for example, an auto cannon. So if you can get an auto cannon close enough, even if it has a low chance to penetrate, it hits so many times that when it does penetrate, it's going to penetrate a couple of times and is very likely to cause some sort of damage either to the engine, to the crew, that sort of thing. So let's take a look at what's happening here with the Boiter Firefly that we're firing at. It has a frontal armor of 11, and uh, the AP on our gun is 11 at max range. So it's now coming within, it came within probably at maximum 600 meters, meaning that we would have an AP of 6 against it. Or it was just above 600 meters, meaning we'd have an AP of 5 of it. Because of course, its front 11 armor cancels out the 11 AP of our main gun, but the fact that it got closer than our max range did impart us some additional armor penetration against it. So when it was at its very closest, we had between a 58.33% chance to penetrate and a 72.22 chance. Now, we did unnecessarily, you know, that was basically a coin flip at the end there. So we did get a bit unlucky. But at longer distances, you can see how we fired consistently and achieved nothing but um, suppression of it, basically. And we, when it was close enough that we had kind of a coin toss of penetrating it, we still wound up with bounces, but we did cause it to fall back. And what actually happened was it went down the road, went into the wreck of the 222 Speywagon and had to manoeuvre weirdly, presenting its side armour. And that's actually what allowed us to finish it off because the side armour is substantially thinner, meaning our AP was higher and we had a much uh, better chance to penetrate. So first time we caused a uh, engine damage and the second one was actually able to kill it. Now, I'm pretty sure there is some sort of hidden mechanic behind what a shell does once it penetrates, um, but I don't think we have any information on that, so it's not really something we can factor into our gameplay. 
But nonetheless, this has been a, a good demonstration of AP calculations, how they work, and a practical demonstration of the effects. Now let's move on to a, another set piece scenario that demonstrates some tank tactics with the help of my lovely assistant, German Joe. Okay. Oh man. <laughs> I'm not sure if I want to. Oh my god. Oh my god. So once again, I've tasked Joe with using a armoured force or a mixed force to defend the L-shaped hedgerow north of my current position. You can see I've got a mixed force. Uh, the primary dump of points in this force is definitely the armour. Uh, I've got a Firefly, two Sherman 3s and a Wolverine. Um, I also have two scouts up ahead in the field and I've bought a small mobile infantry force which I think is crucial for armour attacks. The infantry force consists of some rifles, uh, a rifle leader, and a piot. Also, behind this position, I have two 25-pounders, which I've used to help with smoke and, later on in the battle, suppression. So, a broad overview of what I'm hoping to achieve here is a defeat in detail of the opposition. And what that means is basically forcing him through either blocking his line of sight with smoke or suppressing fire or attacking from a novel angle, something like that, forcing him to only engage my full force with part of his force at the same time. So as you can see, I've blocked off the main angles of fire in the middle of the hedgerow and the road, um, meaning that any tanks that were behind those positions can't join the fight, and instantly his four tanks, his two tanks were forced to engage my four tanks plus infantry force. Now, the infantry in this situation play an interesting role because, quite cruelly, part of it is that they go ahead of the tanks and actually force the enemy tanks to fire at them lest they disgorge infantry with dangerous anti-tank weapons in front of them. But also, if your opponent hasn't microed correctly, they will waste their initial shot on those infantry transports and, of course, they are much cheaper than your very expensive tanks. And it tends to be that with tank battles, he who fires first wins, because obviously the opponent will then be suffering from stress, even if you haven't hit them. And if you have hit them, then obviously they might suffer some sort of critical or be dead from the first shot altogether. The infantry are also the best tool to seize the covered position that we're actually attacking. And they not only provide this kind of nice meat shield situation that we've got going on, but they also help us, should Joe have placed any infantry within that hedgerow, to potentially, say, man an AT gun or wait in ambush with a heat weapon of some sort, like a uh, Panzerfaust or Panzer Shrek. I also had some air support during the engagement in the form of a Spitfire Mark IX and a Typhoon. Now, neither of those was actually equipped with tank hunting uh, payloads, so they weren't actually going to be able to knock any tanks out. However, having a very powerful high explosive dropped on the relatively thin top armour of a tank does usually completely suppress it and or call, cause a fallback, which again can help with that concept of defeat in detail where you're able to knock out an enemy tank's ability to fight just by forcing it to fall back or something like that. So you can see the initial portion of the assault went really well. I've come ahead with a nice group of tanks, knocked out more than my own worth and my infantry are secured in this hedgerow. Now it gets a little bit lax beyond this but I think it demonstrates some more um, tank fighting uh, principles which are, are worthwhile looking at. And that's mostly the, again, change to the efficacy of our guns due to them being fired at max range and also the efficacy of our tanks when someone like Kretschmar on the left there or Wittmann appears and is engaging with our tanks from a calm position whereas our tanks have already been engaged and are stressed out and as a result perform uh, much under their full capacity.
It's also worth noting that special ace units like uh, Kretschmar there in his Panzer IV have uh, much elevated stats beyond regular tanks. So you can see here, even under yeah. artillery fire, uh, AA fire and tank fire, he is able to remain calm and knock out our final Sherman three. So that concludes our tutorial episode on tank tactics and armour penetration. Just as a quick recap, what we've learned is that in order to penetrate we have to have an AP exceeding that of their armour, either based on the base stats of our gun or how close we are to them. We've learned about the various effects that can happen when a tank is penetrated and we've also looked at how stress affects tank crews and can be used to knock them out of the fight, albeit briefly. In our set piece battle at the end, we looked at the way that infantry must be used to support tank pushes and the way to most efficiently utilize our tank forces by forcing the enemy into an uneven engagement, either using the terrain or smoke or some other source of pressure. Don't forget guys, I'm gonna link the two Reddit articles down below that go into more detail on the mechanics behind penetration and also accuracy and they also go into detail about what the percentage chances of certain things occurring uh, when you do penetrate so that's kind of useful to know I mean if you're curious definitely look it up. If this is the first tutorials episode you've seen in this series um, do check below or at the end of the video I'll have the rest of the playlist all linked up ready for you to have a look at and if you did enjoy it guys and find it useful, please feel free to drop me a like and subscribe for more of this kind of tutorial content. In future, I'm looking to do some collaborations with other people in the community to show off perhaps analysis of various decision making by ourselves and better players within the community. And we might also look at more common set pieces that you're likely to run into and discuss good ways to counter those. If you've got any further questions guys, drop them down below in the comments and I'll try and answer them. If you'd like to see another topic covered in a video as well, please let me know what you'd like to see in the comments below. That's all for now though guys, I've been The Discerning Gamer, until next time.